Um, so my challenge here today is to speak to you for a few minutes about the angiographic anatomy of the below the knee blood vessels and the uh, pedal plantar loop. Um, I was not fortunate enough to be here very early this morning, but I'm sure you've seen some of this already. And I'm going to have a little different spin on it, I believe. So here are my disclosures. Leave that up just for a moment. And there are no disclosures relevant to this talk. All right, so the rationale uh, behind this talk, and this really is important if you're doing critical limb ischemia, is that anatomic variations in the arteries below the knee and the arteries in the foot in particular are very, very common. And while I'm going to show you some things here, I don't think we yet fully understand the variability of the anatomy, particularly the collateral anatomy that forms in individuals who have underlying disease with occlusion of the major arterial branches, such as diabetes and chronic kidney disease. With this in mind, understanding the anatomy is extraordinarily crucial because interventions increasingly in this day and age should be targeted, not opportunistic. So the old day of doing a bypass to a target of opportunity or even an endovascular intervention to a target of opportunity really should go away. And you know, the people on the panel and I have sort of talked about this quite a bit. We have the ability to do angiographic mapping and target the vessel supply uh, the wound, recognizing that there's often altered anatomy and recognizing that essentially all wounds are watershed. That's why wounds form in that area, because they're, they're termini of some sort of arterial uh, supply with multiple arterial feeders, which are insufficient and lead to wounds that are pervasive and persistent. And along these lines, and. I've been talking about this for a few years now. We don't like the idea of an angiosome concept, which is a target of a large vessel. We prefer these angiographic mapping, a very distal, extremely targeted interventions based upon distal angiography, contrast injection to multiple tibial vessels to define the altered anatomy and then find the vessels to the foot. We call that angiographosome guided intervention. We don't have to guess. We're there. And here are some of the principles. Obviously, you need multiple views to do this, selective distal injections, intraterial vasodilator, and you're looking for the wound blush. And look at this case, a patient who has a predominant anterior tibial artery uh, supply to a plantar hallux wound. When we're down there, if we're unsure, we'll do methylene blue angiography. And some of you have seen this, or in Japan, it's endocyanine green. We'll, we'll do selective distal injections of one to two Cs of methylene blue. It's actually good to dilute this with a little bit of lidocaine, because otherwise it's uncomfortable. And we can see that we're in the proper vessel to uh, perfuse the wound. So that's very elegant, but let's go through some of these anatomic variants. So the popliteal uh, uh, division has multiple uh, alterations in potential uh, normal anatomy. And you don't have to go through this. Just recognize the most common of these are high origin of the anterior tibial artery and an absent or hypoplastic posterior tibial artery, which often obviously is collateralized by the perineal. And Kawarata has very nicely uh, categorized these. So you don't have to remember anything. You just have to get this article from CCI in 2010 where he's defined these trifurcation uh, patterns. Type 1 has to do with the trifurcation whether it's a two, true trifurcation or an anterior tibial artery coming off first uh, with a bifurcation or perineal coming first or a posterior tibial artery coming first. These are much more common. These are the high origin variants, which are the type 2. Type 2A uh, are the high origin of the anterior tibial, whether or not it crosses over the tibial perineal trunk. Type 2B is a high origin of the posterior tibial. And type uh, you know, 2C is a high origin of the perineal artery, which is the least common. And then finally, and certainly probably the most uh, normal or variant that we uh, see, or most frequent variant we see, are these type 3 variants, which are the perineal continuations. So uh, 3A is a uh, perineal continuation of the posterior tibial artery with a hypoplastic posterior tibial artery. You see that all the time. 3B is continuation of the anterior tibial artery. And uh, 3C is a, uh, is a reptilian variant, if you will, where there's a single perineal artery runoff, which reconstitutes both dorsalis pedis and uh, common plantar artery in both dorsal and plantar circulation in the foot. That's less common. And here's an example. This happens to be a patient with a calcaneal wound who very nicely shows you this distal perineal artery anatomy here. In this patient, it's an occluded, probably rather than hypoplastic anterior tibial artery. But you can see that distally, the perineal artery, through its perforating branch, because it goes through uh, the interosseous membrane, supplies the dorsalis uh, pedis segment. And through its communicating branch here, and this is after reconstituting the pedal arch, uh, has wound supply to this calcaneal wound, but also communicates with the posterior tibial artery. So this is normal anatomy. And obviously, in a disease state, the enlargement that vessel makes it easier to see. Here's a patient 
example, the distal left third toe ulcer and shows you that when you have these perineal continuation, either as anatomic variations or as acquired states uh, due to underlying occlusive uh, disease, you know, these can provide robust supply to areas of wound. So you take a patient like uh, this, uh, and who we've already recanalized and fixed this uh, perineal uh, artery, you could say, all right, you can target the posterior tibial or anterior tibial artery. You know, posterior tibial artery maybe would, uh, you know, supply or anterior tibial artery, dorsal left third toe ulcer. When you do the angiogram and you open the perineal, you see it's got a very good robust collateral into the pedal arch down to the uh, area of the wound. So again, understanding this anatomic variation, both pathologic and, uh, and normal variations is critically important. As we get into the foot, here's a normal pedal arch anatomy. Everyone recognizes this superficial plantar pedal loop and then the uh, deep uh, arch uh, as well. Uh, this over here is the lateral plantar. This is the medial plantar, medial plantar over here. Um, and here's variations, particularly in supply to the great toe. Uh, this is a case where the uh, medial plantar predominantly supplies the uh, uh, hallux, and you can see it over here. I'm sorry, uh, this is uh, medial plantar. Here's a case where it's predominantly the lateral uh, plantar supplies the hallux, and here's a uh, case where uh, you can see it's the dorsalis pedis which supplies the hallux. And again, this is something that should be a normal part of your uh, library, which is this article by Marco Manzi. And occasionally, it's complete separation between the dorsal and plantar circulation. This is what the deep arch looks like. There's a communication between the medial plantar artery and the lateral tarsal artery, uh, and this can be the predominant supply to the foot as well, and occasionally get these variations. This is a variation, uh, in this case, a disease state, but absence of dorsalis pedis artery here, where you get this actually reedy uh, uh, perforating branch, RETE uh, branch, which then comes into the pedal arch. This would be the normal path for this artery, but instead, you see, it instead pursues this sort of course, and my uh, partner sort of called this a longhorn variant. Perfusion is unpredictable, which is why you need uh, angiographosome guided model. Here's a patient who has a uh, calcaneal ulcer. Uh, and look at this. I mean, you have uh, clearly a wound deficit here off the posterior tibial artery, and that's supplied by a, a communicating and perforating uh, branch, probably from the uh, lateral tarsal artery or off the anterior tibial artery uh, distally. So again, it shows the critical value of looking at some of these anatomic variations in pathologic uh, states. And here's a patient who has a plantar foot wound. Here's the uh, posterior tibial artery with this medial and lateral plantar branch. Again, there's sort of a little defect here in the wound blush, and lo and behold, it's off the anterior tibial uh, artery through the arcuate branches. So again, uh, important to recognize things. And here's a patient with a dorsal lateral foot wound, top of the foot laterally, and you can see here a very well-formed, although diseased, uh, medial uh, uh, plantar uh, artery. And when we uh, kind of interrogate that, this is the angiogram with the occluded dorsalis pedis. This segment here fills also through the direct injection of the medial plantar, a little spasm there, and we put a wire through to recanalize this. This wire goes right to the wound, which is right there, through the medial plantar artery for a wound on the top of the foot. So in conclusion, obviously you need to understand the anatomy and both normal variations as well as variations occur under pathologic states. Uh, with this in mind, we prefer this you know, angiographically mediated or angiographosome guided revascularization. And like I said, I have many examples. We don't even appreciate the, the uh, collaterals that recruited when you revascularize, for instance, the pedal arch, which has a huge impact on clinical outcomes and reflects a lot of anatomic variations which we have yet to understand in the foot. Thank you. Thank you very much, John.